I'd like to start today's service with a short message called The Eternal Now. In the beginningless, endless flow of time, each life is a mere ripple, existing only for an instantaneous moment and disappearing forever. But each life is a unique experience with beauty and truth all of its own, with no identical counterpart in history and none absolutely the same in the future. Your life, my life, is attuned to the rhythm of the cosmos and to the heartbeat of reality. Each life exists in the eternal now. Each idea that is thought, each word that is spoken, each action that is taken changes the whole pattern of the universe for the universe is interdependent. Think, speak, and act then, always in the eternal now, with compassion and understanding for your own enlightenment and for the enlightenment of all sentient beings. This is selected from The Heart of the Buddha Dharma by Reverend Kenryu Tsuji. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for this service, which we are preparing for previewing on June 27th of 2021. I hope you uh, will listen reverently as I chant the Shishinrai, uh, expressing our reliance on the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And I will then uh, begin chanting the Jusege, which I hope some of you will join in with me for. Again, preparing this for June 27th, 2021. Thank you for joining us. We rely upon the source of limitless wisdom and endless life. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Dabutsu, Namo Amida Butsu. Namandabutsu, Namandabutsu, Namitabuts, Namandabutsu, Namandabuts. She shun ke ee Busatsu daimuryo jukyo jusege gagon cho segon kishimu jodo shigan hu mandoku sefujo shogak ga o muryo ko ui dai seishu Usai sho bingu, se fujo shogak, gashi jo butundo, yo shoto jipo, kukyo mi sho monna, se fujo shogaku, riyoku jin sho nen, jo e shu bongyo, Shigumu jodo isho tenin shi jinariki en daiko usho mu taido shojo san kumyo kosai shu yakunan kaihi chi egen meshi kon mon e tokusho akudo Su datn zen shu mon kotho jo mandoku iolo jipo nichi gatn shu juki ten ko on hugen i shu kai hodo 
戸籍独歩上大集中札幌市市区供養一体物具足集特本元年上満特異産外を呼ぶ無下地津田美不書願学絵力都市最初村志願や国家大戦の感動国書天人な法人妙計何万だぶ何万だぶ何万だぶ何万だぶ何万だぶ何万だぶ願に優しく毒平等を生いえさい。どうもない。真、お嬢。ああ。こく。なむんだぶ、うるむんだ、なむんだぶ、なむんだぶ、なむんだぶ、うるむんだ。ナモミダブッツーナモダブッツーナモミダブッツーナモダブッツーナモミダブッツーナモダブッツーナモダブッツーナモダブッツナマンダーブルマンダーナマンダーブナマンダーブナマンダーブルマンダーナマミダブッツーナマダブッツーナミダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツーナマダブッツー Well, again, good morning, and thank you for joining us for this service, for participating in this service, which Alan Goto, Kathy Kumagai, Jeannie Toshima, Kyoko Okura Gibbs, and I are preparing to be previewed again on June 27th of 2021. We will continue to prepare these services and Dharma talks for the next six weeks, and then after a three week break, we'll be back in September. Starting September 2nd of this year, we expect to have study classes, Tai Chi classes, discussion classes, meditation classes, and services open to the public. More about this later, but we're hoping、uh, September 2nd will be the first day we'll be wide open to the public. We, we shall see. More details later. This morning's Dharma talk will focus on the three marks of all existence. Also called the three seals of the Dharma, three seals of the Buddhist teachings. And these three principles are the constancy of change, the fluidity of the self, and the fact that only enlightenment, only realizing the deep oneness of all life, will free us of anxiety and suffering and lead us to true fulfillment. The three seals of the Dharma, the three marks of all existence. The non substantiality of all things, the fluidity of the self. These are topics I often speak of. I've been emphasizing the fluidity of the self in recent weeks, and I will have more to say about that today. But first, the teaching that everybody knows is central to all schools of Buddhism, and it is, and that is the constancy of change. Everything is constantly changing. Now, these truths are often phrased in negations. 
the teaching of impermanence, the teaching of no self, the teaching of disease, dis-ease, or suffering. I prefer to state them in an active voice, and this isn't just because I want to be more optimistic. It's not necessarily more optimistic. <laughs> but I prefer to, st to uh, state these three facts about existence, these three seals of the Dharma, in an active voice because they're not just absences. The absence of permanence, the absence of clear self-identity, clear and stable self-identity, the absence of happiness and comfort. And there's more to it than that. These are not just absences. These truths that all Buddhists share are not merely absences. These are the marks of all existence. These are active factors, active conditions in our lives every day. Every day, these active factors are conditioning our lives. I won't, this morning, go much into the debate, is Buddhism religion or philosophy? Buddhism is older than either of those concepts and has elements of spirituality, elements of religious search, elements of conceptual analysis in it. But when we look at this teaching of constant change, we see that in this regard, at least, Buddhism is not just philosophy. As a philosophical principle, the teaching of the constancy of change is questionable. Uh, it's been taught by many people in many cultures, in many religious and philosophical traditions, and roughly the same time as the Buddha. It's pretty hard to date these uh, ancient teachers. Roughly the same time as Shakyamuni Buddha taught the constancy of change in India, Heraclitus was teaching it in Greece. And Heraclitus was a philosopher doing philosophy. And as a result, someone asked him at some point a very paradoxical question. You say that everything is constantly changing. Is that a permanent condition? It's hard to answer that question. It's a paradox if we're talking philosophy. However, philosophically, it's true that everything is changing is a, is a paradox because that principle seems to be permanent. As advice for following a religious teaching, there's no paradox. Will anything, will any condition remain permanent in my life? No. No. It is best that I remain mindful of that fact. Now before we go back to discussing the fluidity of self, coming to be my favorite teaching, let's look at the third mark of all existence. First one is the constancy of change. The second one is what I'm calling the fluidity of the self. The third one is, well, it's even controversial to say what that third mark is, because according to about 200 schools of Buddhism, including ours, the third mark of all existence is that enlightenment alone will lead to overcoming our suffering and lead to genuine fulfillment. That's what 200 schools of Buddhism say. There's one surviving school of Buddhism, the Theravada, that simply say there is suffering. Well, that's an unfortunate way to understand the Buddha's teaching. It's not the case that we simply wish to escape suffering. That would not characterize a religious path that would be very noble at all. First of all, it's not just about me. It's not just my own suffering that I want to see eliminated. This whole ball of suffering that is biological life on the planet Earth needs to be resolved, needs to be transformed, calls out for healing. It's not just my suffering or even just human suffering. It's this huge amount of suffering by biological life on this planet needs some resolution, needs some healing. More importantly, it isn't just about suffering. Our path is not just a path out of suffering. The Buddhist path leads to, leads into, penetrating insight, soothing compassion, genuine kindness, deep wisdom, unshakable composure, indefatigable engagement with life. This is what the Buddhist path leads to, all these positives. We're not just trying to escape suffering. We've got a lot to do. Come to penetrating insight, receive soothing compassion, participate in genuine kindness, learn deep wisdom, come to unshakable composure, live with an indefatigable engagement in life. This is the Buddhist path. We've got a lot to do, so let's be clear about who we are. 
And this brings us back to that old question of, who am I? Who is it that I am? Who is it that you are? Who is it that we all are? We are not ghosts inside a machine. And this is what the no soul stance means. The nature of my identity is not explained by some non-physical permanent subject that is the essence of myself. Something that the Hindus call the Atman, that Western people call a soul. It's not there. <laughs> I really am this process, this biological person. We are not isolated points on an immense graph. We are active points, active parts of a living system. <laughs> we are not isolated points on some huge graph. We are living parts of a unified system. We're active parts of a living system. We are part of an inseparable, dynamic, interpenetrating system. This is what life is. We are each aspects of the system, and each aspect of the system is the system itself. Reality is a process. Selfhood is a process. Personal identity is a fluid process, which isn't merely personal. Now that is paradoxical, so I'll say that again. <laughs> personal identity is a fluid process which isn't merely personal. Myself intermingles with yourself. Your personhood participates in my personhood. Your personhood cross-pollinates the identity of everyone you interact with. My identity, my selfhood, flows out of the influences of my family and my friends and my enemies. <laughs> my sense of humor is my mother's sense of humor. My yes is my mother's yes. My no is my father's no. <laughs> A person must have their yes and their no. Our lives, our very identities participate in one another, flow in and influence one another, flow into and transform one another, influence one another. And our identities cannot be separated. My identity, your identity, my personhood, Alan's personhood, my wife's personhood, this is part of this great universal process. Cannot be separated into little subunits. Your self cannot be separated out from mine and my wife's and my son's and your son's and your daughter's and your niece and your nephew. Selfhood is one big ball of developing processes. And so far as that big developing ball of personhood goes, no one ever put it more succinctly than John Lennon. I am he as you are he as you are me as we are all together. That's from I am the walrus. <laughs> I am he as you are he as you are me as we are all together. Who is it that we all are? This inconceivable oneness is who you are, is who I am. Awakening to the intermingling, developing oneness of all life is what we call enlightenment. Becoming Buddhas eventually. Enlightenment is liberation and fulfillment in the discernment of unity. Again, enlightenment is liberation and fulfillment in the discernment of unity. Enlightenment is the seeing of unity wherever we look. And enlightenment is on its way to you. Enlightenment is on its way to you, reaching out to you. Enlightenment is settling into our lives even now. The enlightening process is shining upon us even when we stumble, and especially when we fall. Enlightened heart and mind illumine us, reach out to us, embrace us. The settling of illumination and goodness into our lives is not complete yet. We will be spiritual heroes one day. For now, it may be enough if we are trusting, hopeful, and pleasant to one another. It may be enough just now to be trusting, hopeful, and pleasant to one another. We will one day be persons who are of great benefit to others. When the caring of the Buddha has settled fully into our lives, we will illumine and transform everyone and everything we come into contact with, transform them for the better, help them to grow. 
for now, humility and gratitude would serve us well. Living in a world of constant change, still a little unclear about just who we are, and yet a bit short of being constantly and utterly happy, we can live these lives that we've been given. We can live these lives fully and vigorously, knowing that there is a goodness to this life, knowing that that goodness is settling in more and more deeply into our lives. We can carry on. Love is coming. Love is coming to us all. The love of Amida Buddha is coming to us all. In closing, if I may, I ask you to join me in Gosho. And again this week, I'll ask you to say the Buddha's name with me for a couple minutes, a minute and a half, two minutes of saying the Nembutsu in closing our service here today. Thank you so much for joining us. As you wish, please join me in Gosho in a posture of respect and peace. We rely upon the source of limitless wisdom and endless life. Namo Amidabutsu, Namandabutsu, Namandabutsu, 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 Namandabutsu. We rely upon the source of limitless wisdom and endless life. Namo Amidabutsu, Namadabutsu, Namandabutsu, Namandabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namandabutsu. Thank you very much. I'd like to close today's service with this short message. Overcome anger by peacefulness. Overcome evil by good. Overcome the mean by generosity and the person who lies by truth. The Dhammapada. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.